Close. Oh, got stuck. Now it's a real danger. <laughs> if you don't do something dumb every once in a while, you, you're not gonna get smarter. That's a big track. Oh, flag, flag, we got a flag. Fish on, all right. Oh, looks delicious. It's a chunky little fella. <laughs> I'm Zachary Fowler and that's Amos Rodriguez and this is the Arctic Blast Survival Challenge. Polar vortex is coming to the north. Yikes. Quite frozen. I got a flag. And yeah. Oh, don't lose it. Don't lose it. Don't lose it. Got it. Catfish. Oh my goodness. I'm knocking out the species game. Mm. Just the camera is just like froze right over. Uh, was your camera still sitting over there? Oh. Good morning. Mm. Slept pretty good. Need some warm. Fed the fire once. I don't know what time. Now, I gotta do some work because the shelter is in danger of the Arctic colds and the winds that are coming to blow her apart. We are talking about 30 to 40 degrees below zero. Arctic blast builds in. From Maine all the way through New England. Some of the coldest wind chills in the country is Maine. Don't leave your house. So we got some pike to cook and all kinds of fun things to build and see if we can't survive this arctic blast. Let's do it. <sighs> ah, it's a beautiful crisp morning. What a nice day. Stream keeps freezing back up and I keep busting through it. I wonder if it'll ever freeze up enough this winter that I can't bust through it when I go over it. It doesn't feel too bad out here. It's amazing how cold it is, but uh, being outside for a couple days in a row, continually, when I was out here before this, working on the shelter, and check out that link in the description below for the whole series in the building of the shelter and now uh now it just feels like the normal i'm sure though when it drops another 20 more degrees on friday that's gonna feel bitey being that this adventure is so close to home it gives me a special opportunity to be there for my daughter turns out for the first time in like three years or so she's having a chorus recital and they're letting people into the schools so i'm gonna zip over there real quick and be present and be a good dad. Ah, proud father. They grow up so fast and she's turning out to be so pretty. I am in so much trouble, or the boys that try to date her are. <laughs> I gotta get my good knife out. We got some pike to process so we can make some delicious, yummy foods. Unless Emos ate all the fish while I was gone. I didn't leave him that long. I'm gonna get my good knife out. Actually, maybe I'll come back up for this stuff because I'll go get the sled. I'll bring the ice fishing stuff back down and set some traps out. And then we'll be able to, uh, we're just gonna try and passively fish with the last minnows that we have. We've been, We've been so unsuccessful thus far right here, but we've gotten stripped, so something's in there. We were hooking them the first two days on the back, and I felt like the hooks were a teeniest bit on the small side. Yesterday I went with my instinct and lipped them for the bigger fish, and sure enough I caught two pike. So I haven't actually done a catch and cook on my new property yet. Really want to get one while we're here. How's it going? Good, started working on the rain. Yeah. Looking good. Yeah, it's shaving all the spalding. Getting yeah. all the spalding, spalted. Yeah, the spalted part out of yeah. it. And I'm gonna try to get enough meat in there so it's strong enough for the lacing so it doesn't break. Yeah. But not too thick where it's just too heavy to carry around. So Yeah, you wanna keep it lightening it yeah. but without breaking it. Yeah. Do you are you gonna round that off so it's perfectly round or do you try to just there's a lacing, pull it tight no matter what shape it is. That's the uniqueness of it. Yeah, I've been thinking about it and I think I will keep the character. Yeah, yeah. I think I, gotcha. think I will just debark it. Yeah. Keep the character of the wood and just follow. Yeah. 
de carácter as a... Let the, uh, like the wood drive the story of yeah. the build, huh? Yeah. How did you, how were you chiseling this? Batooning. Oh yeah? Yeah, just... Just with uh, your knife? Yeah. Just like that. Oh, just a little at a time, huh? Mm-hmm. Uh, you have What is have... that knife? Oh yeah, it's, this one is uh, my, one of my favorites, yeah. I had two of them, one is the, uh, the Scout, the other one is the F1. Uh, basically, I like this knife because it's a full survival knife. You can see yeah. it's a full tank, so you can really, like, this will never break on me out there. You wow. Know? They put your logo on it for you? Yep. That's cool. Yeah, Swedish people, man, they make some really good tools. Yeah. I am Inga from Sweden. Sweet. Mine, That's is mine yours, from Sweden yeah. too? Yeah, for sure, from Sweden. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I missed the other day. Oh, that's so sad to see. Bad axemanship right there. I'll have to sand that up. I'm sorry, girl. So sorry. The old Holtzberg. <clears throat> I feel like we can get something out of this pond. Yeah, leave some sets out there while we work on our stuff today. And, yeah. Watch and tighten up the shelter and, um, and cook some of that pike mm -hmm. and catfish. And, oh, mm -hmm. yummy. Brought a couple things back with me. Sarah gave me this. This is our homemade kombucha. Kombucha. This thing is so good. You get a mother online and uh, and you make your own kombucha. And it is so tasty. If you like kombucha, it costs like five bucks a little one serving at the store. So we're uh, kind of spoiled here. One for meat, one for a most. Oh, thank you. Get our probiotics or yeah, kombucha, man. Whatever biotics and all the healthy stuff your body needs for a growing boy to be strong and play in the woods. Yum. That's good, really right? Really good one. That's yeah. a good one, huh? Really good one. Sarah's really got it dialed in now. Oh, that's so sweet and so fizzy and mmm. Yeehaw. All right, so I think we're gonna put some rice on and make some catfish bowls. Oh, it's boiling. We can put our rice in. Too cool. I'm gonna carefully measure this out. Uh, uh, yep, there we go. Ice is hard all the way. So, I can't keep these in the sled when I drive around. We found out yesterday they spilled all through the sled. Oh, full of water. How'd that happen? Did the minnows spill into it? Oh my goodness, there's like no water in the minnows. That stupid minnow bucket. Oh, that guy's still flopping around. So don't buy one of these buckets if you think you're going to be jostled at all or anything going on. Cheap piece of junk. I need to make a really nice one because that's something you don't want to get out there. And you go to do a day's worth of fishing, you drive hours, get all the way out there and you find half your minnows are spilt all over the bottom of your sled and oh man that was discouraging. like some coyote or something is out here some bird prints fairly large maybe the came down eagle came down for the minnow this is a trash panda there's a raccoon oh I see it was slipping a little bit maybe it's a fox
fish on. Fish on. I just said it. Oh, I lost it. Oh, that was a trout. Almost had a fish. Ah! That looks wetter than the ones I saw out on the ice. And there was a, a slight out there on the ice further, there was a little of this between some of them. Uh. Like, a, like a, a slip and a bound kind of thing happening. So it was definitely there bounding. And so this one going like this, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, boom, exactly. Boom. And not not walking like no a, walking a fox like this. or yeah, no a, walking a coyote. Fox. I thought when I saw some of the prints, but there might have been a coyote prints there too, because there were some that were staggered. That's a big truck. I mean, unless it's a raccoon that's bounding. No, but I don't think no. so. I no. never seen one do that. We could put the uh, our fish scraps out and see if he comes back through. Yeah, that's a good idea. You know, and, and catch them on the trail cam. I lost a lot of weight recently and I now weigh 187 pounds. I've been maintaining pretty consistently. Yesterday we caught a bunch of crappie and pike and we ate a whole bunch of crappie for dinner last night when we got back pretty late. And by the end of the day today, with all the catfish and pike that we're gonna eat, we'll have eaten close to about two pounds of fish. I had 187 pounds with two pounds of fish in me. That makes me about 1% fish by the end of the day. It's too bad that doesn't give me any special abilities to catch fish better. If anything, it just makes me 0.3% crappy. Ugh, this is so cool. It's so comfy in here, the door's open, and I don't know what the temperature is today, but uh, it's just like so cozy. Got my coffee, got my fish. I'm just tickled at how that well this whole thing is turning out even though we didn't do so well. We got a couple flags. Can't tell where the meat starts and it or whatnot because it's so frozen. I'm just gonna leave the skin on it. Oh, we got another flag. That one's not spinning. We'll come back to it. My knot's not right there. That's a good sign. Let's spit it. We still have the minnow? Hey, buddy. And we still have the minnow. Oh, maybe there's a bunch of perch in here messing with things. All right, reset that one. Let's check on this guy again. I think I got a fish. I got a fish. Fish on. Fish on. All right. Hey, a chubby little yellow perch. I knew it. Little stinkers down there messing with stuff. That's all right. That's a nice one. More food. Woo! Put him right back down there. That little minnow seemed to do the job. There we go. Set it again. We're good to go. Why couldn't we do this the other day, huh? Why couldn't we find you the other day? Where were you? All right, throat rip. Ugh. Oh my goodness, that was a mistake. <sighs> I 
I rescued some of the eggs. And it all popped straight out through with the liver. I'm gonna go with wadobo, green pepper, onion, garlic, and a little bit of this sunflower infused oil that Abby got me for Christmas. It's such a good feeling to know you have fish. When you hook up, it's like a happy wish. I clean it out with a little bit of snow. There we go. Squeaky clean. that sizzle. That is the sound of delicious coming to life. See any flags? All right. There we go. I wonder if this is a thing. I can't have just vented that, like sitting back on your heels with a piece of firewood behind you. I wonder if it works even better with a bigger piece of firewood, like. Oh, that's actually even nicer. Make sure it's not the maple wadobo. No, nope, just the regular wadobo that we made with the wood beardsman. And sell on Fowler's Makery Mischief. Dot com. You don't have to spend $800 to begin your new adventure, but I guarantee it every purchase will take you on one. Check out our new adventure bundle available now. Save a bunch by buying the adventure bundle, which includes a bunch of the stuff you've seen me use over the years, my Sparrow Slingshot or the Hornet Slingshot, as well as some exclusive items only available now in the adventure bundle. So head on over to FowlersMakeYourMischief.com and begin your adventure today. Outside of my slingshots, this is one of our best sellers. People love the Wadobo on all their stuff. So I'm not just trying to sell you on it, the significance of using the Wadobo here is this is catfish, and in Canada, the Wood of Beardsman and I had caught catfish, and it was my favorite thing I've ever eaten in the wild. The wadobo and the catfish, so, so good. I just, I wanna try to replicate that experience again, but with some extra vegetables and stuff, making it taste super good. What I'm gonna do now is clear a spot, and put these in here skin side down, and cover the whole thing up with a piece of foil. Kind of let it just simmer away until it's done. Scratch that, I'm making this up as I go. I'm flipping it over skin side up so that way the meat side down gets all the flavors. They also have the fish eggs from our first catch on the adventure on my new lakefront property, so that'll be good. Tasty little fish eggs. A pile of those. Ooh. Yes. Ugh. What do you see? I see two potential widow makers for that 40 mile per hour wind. Yeah. Because that does, you know, they won't fall on us, that leaning one that is already broken. And that's uh, like a maple, so it's pretty rugged, and I even seen some little buds up there, so I think part of it might still be alive, but either way, it's locked in up there. I think there are two that we have to kind of. Ooh, that one right there. This one is one. Yeah. It's leaning right towards the dirt. But it is ash. Oh, it could be strong enough to. Oh my goodness, yeah, that's super strong. I don't know why it's dead though. Dead. That's oak. And that one branch should break and it would fall short of us. Yeah. This side we could probably drop over, over there. Here. Yeah. Uh, and that one towards this way. Yeah. Well, that's the important thing to get done this afternoon. Uh, make it safe and uh, maybe we'll work on the roof I keep saying we'll work on the roof inside but it feels like there's no point in doing it it keeps working so well and I'm just worried about the wind I'm worried about the wind pulling pulling this up it stays down pretty good but I don't know if I put a little rocks in here and tie them on here and then pull it down tight then we'd be more secure yeah we can wrap it around there you think and then wrap it a couple more times Wrap it all around and then if we want we can then add. Put a string on it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it but then it just the rain comes down all the time. Oh, it will sit and it gets here. so gross that's and right. stuff. And it's like it's all that's how my other one was and it got oh. so nasty. That's why I'm leaning more towards 
put a pebble in here, and put a rock in here, and a string on it, and pull down. Yeah. Wait. Oh, flag. Flag up. Flag. Up. Uh -oh. flag. We got a flag. I don't see the knot. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's pulling. Yeah. You feel good? Mm, no. No? <laughs> giving a couple thugs. I thought this was the big hook and the big minnow. Oh! oh. I, no, it wasn't the big hook. But it's a big purge. Yeah, that's a nice that's yellow purge, huh? Biggest purge so far that's uh, come out of here. Oh! Look at that chubby guy. I bet you <laughs> it's pregnant full of. Poop. Yeah. Full of eggs and stuff. Look at that beautiful color, oh, man. Know, right? Whoa, really looks delicious. It's a chunky little <laughs> fella. <laughs> awesome. Yay. Rice, aroni, and some peppers and onions, catfish, and catfish. Garnish of eggs. Put garnish of egg on top. Oh. Look at that. Oh, doesn't that just look delicious? Amos, dinner time. <laughs> I can't really sit cross legged. Yeah, no, with this big no, with all, and all the these layers. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't really work, does it? Like maybe a little one leg under thing. Yeah, there we That's go. That's quite the. I don't stretch like you do. <laughs> no. I need to start stretching. I, like I did on a loan, yeah. like I would stretch every morning and every yeah. evening and and stuff, but like I haven't kept up with it. <laughs> All right, Lord, thank you for the fish catches at the lake here and our catfish. Uh, bless the rest of our day. Help us to secure the place against the storm that comes. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. All right. Yeah, thank you, man. Mmm, those eggs. It's a lot thinner than. Mm -hmm. Than like bigger catfish, you mm -hmm. know, like it's very, um, like I feel like other ones are like more steaky and mm -hmm. you get a lot to it. The softness of the meat though almost reminds me a little bit of a mackerel or something. It yeah. just kind of falls apart. Mm -hmm. The skin gets all blah, 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 blah. it's all wiggly and floppy. The catfish itself even looks like mackerel when it's cooked up. It's got that same softishness to it. So good though. like a soda can or a seltzer can I put down and try to smash it and I did miss like I missed by uh was your camera still sitting over there yeah oh I hit it oh oh Where? no oh my goodness oh no oh wow we are uh, a couple of boneheads. My tripod. Your everything. Oh my gosh. Look. Dude. Oh my goodness. I'm glad it was this and not the shelter and everything else out there. <laughs> yeah, look at it though. It's like the camera. <laughs> look at that. <laughs> I can't believe we did that. Like, I, I was like, oh, if it misses, I, you know, there's. I didn't have the bucket over there. Like I didn't even bother to move the bucket. Came down and it rolled, it fell over here. I thought it was gonna land over there is where I cut it to, but it just snapped off so quickly. Maybe I made my notch too deep, but that's the nature of this 
That's the nature of this uh, poplar. Now that I look at the top of it, I think we would have been safe. Because look at this. This is snapped off because of something. Like a dragon came by and snapped the top off. This is not dead and rotten. No, look in here. It's completely dead. Yeah? Look at all the water. Oh, I know it's dead in the middle, but the grain when I was cutting it was, uh, yeah, it's dead inside of there. It's dead on the inside, <laughs> but it's not dead. The rest of the wood, that's all. Oh, this layer right pretty there. Pretty solid. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe now's a good time uh, for you to get the new camera. Yeah. You know? Live and learn. If you don't do something dumb every once in a while, you, you're not going to get smarter. You just. You just think you're the coolest thing in the world, and, and when it does come crashing down on you and you realize you're not, it, it, it's, it's harder. <gasps> I'm gonna hide behind this tree now. <laughs> just in case. I don't wanna be like the camera. There he goes. There he goes. Oh, got stuck. Coming back. That's what I was calling. Yeah, it's because that side, because you did the same thing as that one. Now it's a real danger. Yeah, it's an wow. old ash tree. It's too bad. It was completely dead. The no, no sticks on it or nothing. It's like, yeah, look at how many years. Yeah. Here, let's count it. We can we can sleep well, all, but at least about that. Yeah. You know. I feel better with those two I, down. I feel like there's some other sticks and things up there that could fall. Yeah. But I think we're good. Yeah. Let's see what else we can get up to. Dinner prep time, we're gonna clean some of the spike we caught and try to make a tasty meal for the evening. So this is because we're glamping here and we want these boneless nice pieces of uh, pike. We were trying to make pike burrito, but for example, when I was on Alone Season 7, I was catching a bunch of big pike and in that situation, you will want to eat as much as possible of the animal, so you will pick all of these things. So I will smoke the whole pike. I will just gut it, scale it, and then cook the whole animal because then you want to eat the skin, you want to eat all the tiny pieces of meat between the bones. Well, uh, either way, I mean, we're not picky that much anyways. It was mm -hmm. just for the sake of doing it for the kind of, for the fun for of the it, fun right? For the fun of it, yeah. You know, learn. to see if we can make a boneless pile of meat. Cleaning job here. I'm pretty impressed with how much meat we ended up with there. That's a good size, you know, chunk of meat. Yeah, that's a lot of meat. We didn't get as much done on the shelter today. I did the firewood. I just got to bring it in and I had to cut another piece of the tree or two to get it out of our pathway. This isn't so much a survival challenge as surviving the main Arctic. Blast. Arctic blast, you know, that's like the whole point of this, you know, main Arctic blast survival challenge So we, we don't have, we're not limiting it ourselves and we're trying to have fun with what we cook and mm -hmm. you know We could have just smoked this and then just picked just, at it and yeah, you had can a just got it in big, pieces. Yeah. big stewy mess and we'll throw all this and uh, These pieces and stuff into with the bones and make a nice broth So when we wake up in the morning get that broth mm -hmm. going climb back in our sleeping bags when it's you know five degrees tomorrow morning and, uh, and tomorrow night will be 18 degrees. We'll have the stew and get some nice uh, nutrients out of that. And then we'll see if we can anchor the roof down and be sure we're ready for these 40 mile an hour gusts. Mm -hmm. And uh, negative 18 to, you know, maybe even negative 20 some odd mm -hmm. degrees. Yeah, we'll see so how it gets. It's basically 30 degrees cooler. Actually, that'll be like 35 degrees colder than what we've had been mm -hmm. through the last couple nights. And we've been fine so far. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> will we make it? Or will you be finding a frozen Amos and Fowler in the morning? <laughs> Is this our last video? <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs>
dinner is ready. Wow. Fish, we got sour cream, we got the sprouts I grew at home. We got some of the hot sauce, the Fowler's hot sauce here. Doctor it up the way you want. I'm gonna put a little rice in mine. I wanna go for one of those tail pieces. One of the side pieces. We should have carved a spatula. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Salsa. Not homemade by me. The sprouts on top. I love sprouts. I we eat these every single day. Sour cream. With the hot sauce. Right down the center. Yeah. Oh, it just barely closes. That's the way a burrito should be right there. It just, just fits. I did too uh, you much. Did. <laughs> They're oh. gonna make a big taco. Fold your, <laughs> fold your end first. All right, <laughs> say grace. Lord, thank you for the fish. Thank you for the adventure. And keep us safe tomorrow when it drops down. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> You're like, I can't let go of it. It's just gonna explode. It's like... Mmm. Mm. Mmm. Couple bones. Mm -hmm. mm. Careful. It's so good. Mm -hmm. mm. It was my first time trying that boneless technique. Mm. It wasn't quite the boneless yeah. because it was the first time. <laughs> we earned it. That was mm. quite the slog through the, all that slush. If we didn't have the snow dog, mm -hmm. it just skimmed over that. Aaron and those guys hiked out there and step and slog and step and sink in six inches of, of slush through. When you step on, Slushy, yeah. on like three quarters of an inch of ice and you it almost supports your weight and then you go through. Mm -hmm. And you just keep doing that step after step. It's Water. exhausting. You know? Whoa. Yummy. Mm. Wow. Oh. 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 Doesn't get much better than that. Oh, I could do that in the store like all day long. Mm hmm. And the wind starts at four in the morning. This m tomorrow? This yeah, tomorrow morning at four. Oh, so we didn't we didn't finish tying things down. <laughs> <laughs> we might be outside at four in the morning working on this thing. Yeah, more roof beams would be good because then something can't come stabbing straight through. It gets stuck on them mm -hmm. and it slows it down. I was in a teepee during a tornado in South Dakota. Really? Yeah, it was really serious, man. It was bad. Yeah. Uh, the Sundance, bunch of teepees, big teepees. Yeah. Of the Sundance, yeah, the woman's teepee, huge. The man's teepee, main teepee. I mean, the poles are huge. And I was in a little teepee, probably as big as this. Yeah. And, uh, I was getting all my stuff, all my regalia ready, and the next day was the beginning of the Sundance. Yeah. And all of a sudden, just like they say, you hear a train, a freight train coming. Everything shakes and it's loud. Loud. And we saw the supercell forming earlier in the night. But we didn't realize that it was going to be a tornado. But it's mm. always crazy weather up there in the Black Hills. And sure enough, after the freight train, the, the big shaking of everything, it started just blowing up. The tipi was just blowing up and shifting, the whole thing shifting. Mm. And we just like grabbing the tipi poles, holding. And then once we were in the, like the eye of the storm, huge lightning. And the lightning was so bright that through my TP, you can see all the other, it was so bright. Yeah. And I will see the big tipis, the men's TP, all the guys were holding. Each pole of the big tipis had a guy holding the big poles. Whoa. Oh, we lost our head, big overhead. Big light. Now it's yeah. ready for the spooky ending. Yeah. And, uh, and it was so bad, man. It was like so bad. All of a sudden, this kid comes in my TP. Because he knew I had a first aid kit. Yeah. And his head was, he was bleeding out of his head. He had a big thing in it. So I patched him up really quick. And he was just like madness. And then this lady came running. 
with the face of fear. And she's coming in the TP. I lost my keys, I lost my keys. And I'm like, oh no, it's gotta be crazy out there. And I went outside and it was just this crazy, crazy thing. The woman's tipi had blown over the hill. So all the ladies, they were all the men trying to get all the ladies out. So we started trying to go get all the ladies, taking them to the cars, trying to get them to town. They had to go, all the ladies had to go to the hotel in town. Wow. And the next day he was rebuilding the whole camp. We couldn't start the sun dance until the afternoon. It was madness, man. It was oh, crazy. Wow. Because when the wind's blowing, I remember, you know, living in the yurt in the woods mm -hmm. on my other property, it was like, it it would, when the wind's blowing just right, it'd be like, ba boo ba boo and it yeah, pops your, that. it pops your ears and mm -hmm. stuff, and it's like, it's like, boom, it's like, get, almost like getting, you're getting pushed. That's you it. Know? Yeah, it just it's like, blows. Yeah. And it was even shifting the whole tipi, moving a tiny bit at a time, every time. Oh, really? That's how we felt. All right. Yummy, yeah, man. Well, I think I'm ready to tuck in. Yeah. I feel, oh, so full. It was quite the day, man. And we could, with the temperatures the way we've been so low, we could go up to the other, some of those other spots and check them out. And they'll be, yeah, and it's because frozen. It'll be frozen. Yeah, we could. There was a lot of pike. It'll be cool to catch some more pike, man. Let's get some sleep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fire is good and hot. Just cranking over there, and uh, it's cozy. It's not as cold as yet as it says it's going to be tonight, though. <sighs> oh, still got a couple 12 degrees or so to drop before morning, so I'll have to load the fire in the night. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next one. I'm done. Stick a fork in me. See ya.